And we turn now to another major infrastructure project. The vast system that provides water from Hetch Hetchy to the Bay Area is undergoing a major retrofit as part of the first ever Bay Area Science Festival taking place this week. We present this look at the engineering behind this massive project by KQED's Quest series. From the peaks of California's High Sierra, the Tuolumne River springs to life. It tumbles thousands of feet into the Hetch Hetchy Valley, where a dam slows its mighty flow and pools its pristine waters for a thirsty population 167 miles to the west. If you're one of our two and a half million customers in the four counties that we serve, you're getting 85% of your water from Hetch Hetchy. And from there, it comes through a variety of pipelines across the Central Valley, and pipelines in the East Bay, and then there are pipelines around the South Bay and across the Bay that brings the water to our different customers. Five local reservoirs in Alameda and San Mateo counties supplement the system which delivers, by gravity, nearly 300 million gallons of water a day. For nearly 80 years, the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission has been making sure Bay Area taps flow with Hetch Hetchy water. Much of the system was built in the 1920s and 30s, spurred by the still fresh memory of a disaster that devastated San Francisco. The great earthquake and fire of 1906 really got the Hetch Hetchy project going. After the city burned, people could really see that there was a need for an assured and abundant supply of water in case something like that ever happened again. So that's really when the impetus to cre create the Hetch Hetchy system takes off. Despite opposition from Sierra Club founder John Muir and his supporters, in 1913, San Francisco won federal permission to flood the Hetch Hetchy Valley in Yosemite National Park. It then took San Francisco city engineer Michael O'Shaughnessy two decades to build the aqueduct. More than 80 years later, environmentalists continue to advocate for restoring the Hetch Hetchy Valley. In the meantime, an overhaul of the aging water system is currently underway. Because it crosses three active faults, there's a risk that a major earthquake could leave parts of the Bay Area without water for a month or longer. The Water System Improvement Program is a $4.6 billion program that will extend through 2016. It encompasses 81 projects, and one of the main goals of the program is to be able to deliver 265 million gallons of water per day to our customers within 24 hours of a major earthquake. It's one of the largest engineering projects in Bay Area history. In August, workers in Menlo Park began digging the first tunnel underneath San Francisco Bay. When it's finished in 2015, the $313 million five-mile tunnel will carry a new steel water pipeline and shield it from a magnitude 7.9 earthquake. It's uh, being installed in a clay layer of material that responds very, very well to uh, earthquake problems down in a layer that, that's not prone to react during an earthquake to liquefaction. Liquefaction occurs when the shaking from an earthquake causes waterlogged soil to behave like a liquid. A custom-built tunnel boring machine excavates the dirt like a giant cheese grater and erects the concrete line tunnel at the same time. This machine is unique in that it's an underground factory that's uh, 600 feet long. This underground factory consists of sections that trail the machine, sending out dirt and bringing in water, air, and 5,000-pound concrete segments. It eats dirt in the front and it extrudes concrete pipe. Finish tunnel. The concrete tunnel rings will come in two stacks, three high. The ring erector will erect those six rings one at a time and then the machine will thrust off those rings when it moves forward the next time. The Lower Crystal Springs Dam in San Mateo County is also being upgraded, and the nearly 90-year-old Calaveras Dam in the East Bay is being rebuilt. The Hetch Hetchy system-wide improvements are being paid for by a 2002 bond measure passed by San Francisco voters. 
In addition to stealing the system against big earthquakes, the Hetch Hetchy Water System Improvement Program also enhances the quality of Hetch Hetchy drinking water. Hetch Hetchy water system is so incredibly clean, it's one of the few systems in the country that requires no filtration. It does get treated, however, by a chlorine process and also a brand new ultraviolet light process that we just finished the construction of that plant in the last few months. But it's the rumbling threat of earthquakes that drives much of the innovative engineering and design evident in the retrofit work, especially along a busy corridor in the East Bay. We have four key pipelines that carry up to 95% of our water supply that cross the Hayward Fault in Fremont in Alameda County. And the last major earthquake on the Hayward Fault was in 1868. So an earthquake on that fault is not a matter of if, but when. So we had to come up with a very innovative uh, solution. We are going to be installing a 300-foot-long vault that includes multiple segments that are separated by a six-inch gap. It will allow the vault to deform without crushing the pipeline that will be inside. Then on both sides, we will install a ball joint. And a ball joint will allow the pipe to rotate up to 12 degrees. We will also install a slip joint. And what a slip joint does is it allows the pipe to slide more than nine feet. It's a challenge to keep the Hetch Hetchy system running while re-engineering it to last for future generations. And as the Bay Area grows, so does the need to protect the water the system carries, especially in a disaster. We've done a lot of things to improve building codes, to make sure buildings don't fall down, but all of that falls apart if there's no water. It would be a major economic problem for the entire Bay Area if our water systems failed in an earthquake and you could not get them back up and running quick enough to provide that service to people. Well, you can see a longer version of that story on Quest on Wednesday, November 9th at 7.30 p.m. right here on KQED Channel 9.